You ready to record a video? You're gonna be the main star in the video, huh, buddy? Yeah? Then you have to sit and look this way. Look at the camera over here. Okay? Now stay there for 30 minutes. So I was working on the next video. Flutter came out with an absolute banger of a release. We finally got Flutter 2.5. Now I decided to take some time and go through this update in video format. So let's go. So according to Flutter, this is the second most issues and PRs that have been merged in one release. They closed 4,600 issues and merged 3,932 PRs from 252 contributors, which is crazy. So the main theme for this release was performance and tooling. And there was a lot of updates in both of those categories. There was also some new features introduced like full screen support for Android, material use support, text editing shortcuts, a new widget inspector, making it easier to add dependencies in VS Code, and a new app template that I'm super excited about. So let's go through it all. So first thing that jumps out at the beginning, they added even more stability to the iOS jank issue that we heard about. They had a fix for it before, but now it's gotten even better. So there's three different ways that they made this iOS jank issue even less of an issue. First, they made improvements to their scheduling policies. Then they improved their garbage collection. And then they improved the latency between sending message with Dart and Objective-C or Kotlin and Java. And then also Flutter can now run natively with M1 Max, which is good news because I want to get one of those. Then with Dart 2.14, we got some formatting, some language features, and then pub and linting out of the box, which is really useful because normally I have to implement those by myself every project. Now they're just there. So when you create a project, you'll automatically have the Flutter Lints linter included. And then you have the analysis options.yaml file in there for you as well. So you don't have to keep remembering to add in lints for every project. It's just there by default. So we mentioned the full screen Android applications. So there's three different types of full screens. You could have lean back, sticky, sticky, immersive, and edge to edge. There's also some material U and like I said, some text editing shortcuts. There was lots of improvements to the camera, image picker, and the plus plugins. So if you needed these features, these were the go-to plugins. So it's great that they're working on them and making the camera, image picker, and all those other ones a lot better. One of the coolest things here is the camera plugin now has early support for web. So you can start maybe implementing some camera features on your websites as well. So remember the two key features of this update were the performance, and then there was also the tooling. So we're getting onto the tooling part. There's lots of improvements in the dev tools. First, the performance tool. They allow you now to check your performance live before you have to click record and record the activity and then check it afterwards. Now you can actually see how your app is performing live. And now also identifies shader compilation. So you have more accurate ideas of what's causing these issues. And then also we have a colored frame chart now. So you can see where things are going wrong quicker. Then there was updates to the widget inspector as well. Now you have this thing called a widget inspector console where you can see details about the specific widget and what's going on with it in the console format. And from this screenshot, you can notice three different changes. So it tells you now what each debug toggle button does. So if you hover over it, it gives you a better explanation of it, which is definitely useful if you forget those like I do. Then using the widget tree, it's easier to scan and locate the widgets. And then also they have a color coded layout in both the widget tree that matches the layout explorer too. Then there are a couple of things for Android Studio and IntelliJ, which I don't really use, but they updated the integration tests, icon previews, and test coverage. So now I think the I think the coolest one there is a test coverage. You can now see red lines where your tests didn't cover any of the code. Now this is the part that got me the most excited, the VS Code updates. This is my editor of choice, of course, and there was a couple really important updates. So if you've seen my previous videos, you probably know I use the PubSpec Assist plugin a lot, and that's how I import most of my packages, but now they added that by default with Dart, using Dart add dependency and Dart add dev dependency. So now you don't have to go to pub.dev if you know what packages you want. You can just type them in and they import them right away. And from the screenshot, I noticed that it gives you all the options as you're typing. With PubSpec Assist, you had to type it out, then press enter, and then it'll show you the results. And they also added a fix all command. So if you have issues or hints, which I have all the time with my const widgets, you can just use the VS Code command to fix all of it. And they even suggested a cool little hack that fixes everything every time you save the project. I think that could definitely save a lot of time in development. 
They also made some updates to the test runner. So now it looks a little bit better and it holds the previous state of your test. So you, so you can run them one by one and make sure you see all of the ones pass. So this section was my favorite part of the whole release. They added some better exception handling. So now when you have an exception, instead of it guiding you deep down into the flutter code or where it happened within the actual SDK, it'll show you where it happened within your code and what part of your code actually triggered that exception to happen. And then our beloved counter app, while it's still there, they added another default project. So this is a project that uses a lot of the best practices of Flutter. It's just, it's a very simple project, just a list where you could enter another view, change your settings and a couple of things like that. But I think this will definitely help a lot of people get a good architecture and full structure and organization within their projects. You'll notice they do a lot of the things we've gone over in this channel. So they use change notifier for state management, generate localizations, have some example images, and they use the feature first folder structure, which is similar to what we do here. And they even have navigation between multiple pages, which is great. And lastly, they introduced this thing called Pigeon 1.0. So this is going to relate mostly to the people that maintain packages, as this will help you go into the native code of the platforms. So this is a code generation tool. Using the pigeon description, you can write that out and it generates Dart code, Java code, and Objective-C code. So obviously there's a lot more things that were merged in Flutter 2.5, but these are just the highlights that Google provided. I'm really happy where all these things are going now that Flutter web is out. We're in like a stable position where it's performance improvements and tooling that are the main focus in a lot of the releases. And I'm happy to continue seeing this trend forward. And hopefully in the next release, we'll get desktop as stable as well. So thank you for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share if you enjoyed, and see you next time.